Before we continue with the actual unit operations, guys, I decided to present you to this case study, which is one of my favorites because it shows a very common process on daily life, sugar, and how we require uh, separation processes involving solids. From beets to sugar, and remember beets are these, I don't know, they look pretty similar to a carrot, but they are white, and the main idea is to remove their sugar from inside and end up with a cube or a crystal of white sugar. If you were to measure the time it takes to produce shimmering white sugar crystals, which are this one, this one right here, from a bit that has just been delivered or harvested to the field, from the field to the factory, you will be surprised. It takes only eight hours to form this beautiful vegetable or fruit right here to a delicious sugar. Now probably wondering which type of uh, unit operations we're going to be using. For instance, I think drying and evaporation are going to be included. Maybe extraction. Maybe what else? Smashing can be well. That technically speaking, no, it's not a solid involving process anyways that this is my first guess try to make your own first guess how do we convert a bit into sugar crystals ah, i forgot of course we will be including crystallization here it goes and this is the quick diagram it's a four part or four slide show so bear with me i try to break it into the most relevant parts and before we even continue, I want you to memorize these streams. So the bit slices are this one right here, which are the initial ones. Then we get water or condensate. Then we get juices. The juice is essentially uh, water plus sugars plus impurities. We get steam, which is high temperature vapor. Uh, Massequit, so I don't know, this is from French, I think. Massequit. I don't know how to pronounce this, sorry. Essentially, this is the material that is being left over as a cooking leftover or as a solid part. And finally, sugar form. Okay. Initially, uh, we're going to be forming the juice extraction. So we got to remove the juices from our pit. The bits are harvested, they are going to be cleaned up. As you can see, there are some water adding here. But the important part is in the washing part. We're going to add the bit into this washer. We're going to add water and all the impurities, soils, etc. is going to be removed. They go back to this uh, treater, which is going to either send the water back to the bit soil or it's going to be sent to the biological waste water treatment, which eventually is going to have a completely purified water. That's on the part of the humidity or water part, but I'm interested on the sugar part. So let's continue with the bit slices. So now that they are clean up, they will go to the slicer. The slicer is nothing more than a change on shape. There is no chemical reaction intended there we just want to make these smaller in pieces they are going to be preheated in a coset scalder which as you can imagine is it has its screw and it's moving this part right here now what we want to do is to remove the juices and this is very important guys to see how the juices are recovered here and also check how the leftover of the bit slices which contain a little bit juice still are going to be sent to this extraction column water at 70 celsius is going to be poured through the device to extract the sugar and produce raw juice so what we are doing is adding water at 70 celsius here and here and we want to remove all the leftovers and send back this juice part here so essentially we have a recovery of the materials at the end we will have steel bit slices plus water they are sent to the pulp press because as you can see we added water here and here we gotta remove that and in order to remove that we gotta form or 
use a press, which is going to form the pulp and separate the liquid. So by now we have the juices, which are water plus sugar, maybe something around 15 to 20% sugar. And we got the slices, which are essentially solids with a little bit of moisture and water content. So here we go, we got the juice and we got the solids. Now it's time to start purifying that juice to obtain the crystals or the sugars. We will be using a lime kiln to produce the natural substance of lime and carbon dioxide. Essentially what we have here is calcium carbonate, which is very, very high in temperature. This is a kiln, which is technically a furnace or an oven. And what we're going to produce is calcium oxide and carbon dioxide, both gases and as a slurry. We're going to send the lime milk to the liming column which is going to help the juice remove and form this slurry with sugar. So the juice is getting even more separated and we are going to get a better content material and we're going to add CO2 for the carbonation. So the juices will be sent directly to the filter thickener, which is very, very important. From here, we're going to separate two things. Remember that the green, uh, sorry, the green line is going to be the leftovers of the lime milk, which were sent from here. So they are separated, lime, carbonation lime. And we obtain our juice, which is going to be sent for further treatment. Now I want to focus on the solids. So we have the solid slides of peat. We're going to be adding molasses. Molasses are those materials which are not technically speaking sugars, yet they work as sugar. They are very black. I don't know if you've seen, it's actually pretty common to see in a barbecue sauce, you add molasses instead of sugar. It's a very sugary uh, product, which is very, very, I, I don't know, I would say it's pretty similar to carbonated material, still very, it's very delicious, I gotta admit. Anyway, the solid, Bits will mix with the molasses, go to the drying drum, and will be forming pellets of the solids, of course. Okay, now a clear thin juice with a sugar content of about 16%. So now we're talking about 16% sugar content in the juice will be produced from this step. Now, as you can imagine, if we have water and sugar, we must remove water. And the best way to do so is via evaporation. The thin juice is concentrated by heating to make a thick, golden, beautiful brown juice, which is going to be delicious, with a sugar content of about 67%. So this is very viscous, very dense, and very sweet. And this is done via the multi-stage evaporation station. So we are removing water as condensate, and we are removing water as an evaporation product and of course this comes from a steam boiler so we have steam at very high temperatures is uh, sent to this uh, evaporator and they are in contacted with the juices at the end we end up with a thick juice right here well, let's say thick juice and then we gotta filter that what we're going to do is we are still removing a uh, solid material which is not proper of our final sugar crystals. And as you can imagine, eventually we need to crystallize our material. The thick juices are boiled until crystals all form, which are a glowing golden yellow color because they will be covered with syrup. The syrup is going to be separated from the crystals in a centrifuge. Okay. Let us focus our attention. We got thick juice right here, and it will be sent to several evaporation crystals, which technically they are pretty similar from here. And as you can see, there are two main sections. This section, whoops, sorry, this section right here, and this section right here. For the sake of this example, I'm going to focus first on the molasses. Right here, molasses is the leftover product, which is, as stated before, a very black, viscous, uh, sugary material. It can be sold in the market, and actually it has a good price. 
and yeah all the water from the vapor are going to be recovered and the interesting part right here is to see how the centrifuge and the minglers will produce white sugar or refined sugar the name of refined sugar is essentially that they have been in the cycle white sugar typically refers to the first crystals forms anyways they will go to silos and they will go through inspection bagging packaging loading and selling essentially that's how we create sugars uh okay we'll recheck this out and finally converting the finished sugar is dried cool and stored in silos it will be later subsequently uh, withdrawn and further processes required to be packed and well those are more into actual packing more into manufacturing rather than chemical engineering over 80 percent of the sugar is shipped to the converting industry which uses it to make confectionery beverages baked goods and so on it will be business to business and only 20 percent will actually end up in a household this will be business to consumer and well that's how we produce sugar recycling of all the byproducts of this process are returned to natural cycle this is very important all is uh recycle all is taken advantage nothing is left over as a byproduct everything goes back to either the production cycle or to the natural cycle the pressed slices of sugar beet are used as animal feed or compost the carbocalc which is the carbolic lime which let me go back is right here carbonation lime that is a byproduct of processing the juice is an excellent fertilizer so maybe you thought that that was a very chemical part and it couldn't go back to the uh, natural cycle well it can go back because it has lots of carbon lots of calcium and some leftover of the juices some leftover of the sugar bits and this is the whole diagram oops sorry uh, remember the mass equit, which was the solid leftover or solid mass, the cooking mass? These are present right here. And the sugar, these are all the way, this one right here and this one right here. So I don't like that molasses are left over as the juice, but yeah, technically I was thinking and correct. Molasses are slightly viscous they still contain water and they contain the impurities which cannot be uh, removed with fi common physical processes you will need to go for much more complex processes and in the field industry well it's not likely to occur because the ratio of win-win or how much you are investing into obtaining all the sugar is not convenient or not feasible nowadays so that's why we sell this as simply as molasses Thank you.